Welcome to the podcast, Speaking to Influence, Communication Secrets of the C-Suite. I'm Dr. Laura Sokola, your host, founder of Vocal Impact Productions and author of Speaking to Influence, Mastering Your Leadership Voice. Everybody, we did it again. Another year on the books. And as we come to the end of this calendar year, uh, I don't know about you, but I think the majority of us tend to use it as a time to both reflect on everything that we've done, uh, lessons learned the hard way and successes and uh, things that we really want to celebrate. And we take it as an opportunity to look ahead, look at the year that's coming up and decide what do we really want? What do we want to continue that's worked well? And what changes do we want to make? Where do we want to grow? Uh, what new experiences do we want to have? Now, this is different from resolutions. I am emphatically anti New Year's resolutions. Why? Because it's really an opportunity for us, meaning resolutions. I don't, when I have in the past set those resolutions, it's always with kind of the eye roll and the uh, feeling of, of obligation to figure out something that I really don't want to do, but I know that I should do like diet and exercise or, you know, whatever it happens to be. And that's just a recipe for a disaster. You know, if you were ever on the bandwagon in the first place, you're just going to fall right off of it. If you're like me, I like variety. I like to try new things. Um, and I like where each one that I try gets to be a solid win on its own. And you know what? If you try something new and it works and you like it and you stick with it, it becomes a new habit. Great. And if not, fine. But it's still a win on its own. So I want you to consider today's episode to be like a New Year's party, not with a sit down menu that you have to pick one item and commit to it for the entirety of the night, but consider this as a New Year party with, uh, let's call it, heavy appetizers of ways to strengthen your leadership and communication muscles and, and the relationships around you. What does that look like in reality here? What that means is today is the best of the 24 hour influence challenge for the year. This is a smorgasbord of nine challenges that I've selected of all the different guests over the course of the last year. And we've broken them into three different categories. Category number one is all about you. Category two is about developing your skills. And category three is about giving to others. So join me now and let's scan the menu. Then pick and choose. You can either just decide to implement or taste the ones that sound most appealing or most interesting or try them all. Either way, you can't go wrong because again, each one is a win. Anything you try for the sake of being healthier, being a better person for yourself, being a better leader, a better friend, a better neighbor for others, or just strengthening your own skills overall, it is a win. So let's get started. The first category, of course, is all about you, all about doing things for yourself. So the first challenge that I wanted to revisit with you was from the very first episode of this year. Our guest was Janet Salazar, the president of the Foundation for the Support of the United Nations. And she wants to talk to you about remembering to care for your entire self as a whole person. Here's Janet. This is from me and this uh, I practice every day of my life. And this is to me the most important thing, which is to love yourself. Hmm. Make time for yourself because you can never give what you don't have. So if you do not have strength, if you do not have energy, you don't have inspiration, you don't have resources, you know, in practical ways, you can't give it. So if you really want to be more effective out there, you know, to, to help other people, make other people's lives better, um, you know, you've got to start with yourself first. So mm -hmm. love yourself. I mean, I mean pamper yourself, you know, um, um, exercise, eat what you love, you know, eat healthy and all that stuff. I know a lot of this is um, uh, cliche, but there is so much benefit from that. As a matter of fact, you know, that's the, that's the best love you can you can give is actually loving yourself and, and enjoying what you what you enjoy doing all that you know enriching yourself um forgiving yourself if mm. you make mistakes etc and if you do that you know if you do that make it a daily habit for me i do that every morning you know and and, and prepare for my day and then at, in in uh in in the evening, at night, before sleeping, and all that stuff. Um, if you do that, you know, um, you, you'll you'll be more. You feel more generous in giving back. You feel more sure. energized and inspired. You know, to 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 
help even your friends and family. You don't have to do great things even, right? <laughs> um, especially, you know, at these times where we have multi-crisis, et cetera. But yeah, so it, it, you, you, you become more full pretty much in, you know, in, in, in giving um, more of yourself to other people. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, now, one of the things that I like to do every year is to create a vision board. I usually do it in January, big collage poster, lots of pictures and words and inspirations that uh, are things that I want to do, be, have, achieve, et cetera, over the next year or longer term. And my next guest that I want to go back in time and revisit with you is Marcus Allen, who is the president of the Independence Chapter of Big Brothers Big Sisters, an organization I'm sure you're all quite familiar with. And he has a fabulous way of helping you to get a sense, really get a big scale picture of what you want your vision to be for your life. Because if we, as the uh, the Cheshire Cat is purported to have said back from Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice in Wonderland or through the looking glass, if you don't know where you're going, really any path will do. It doesn't matter which way you go. So let's figure out what your vision is going to be so that you can then figure out how to get there. I would think most of your listeners, uh, Laura, from what I can tell, are educated or goal driven or, you know, successful at whatever place they are in their lives right now and, and are looking for more success. Um, and one of the things that I would challenge you to do is something I heard Steve Harvey um, state last year, which I thought was amazing. And I started or two years ago and I started doing it and it was write down 300 things you want to accomplish in your life. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can always revisit these because it will continue to change. The life continues to constantly change. And we are constantly growing and changing how we, our outlook and the, the environment around us is constantly changing. But what I did was I, I, I made it into category. So I had like, life, I had um, career, I had finance, I had family, I had fitness, I had fun. And I had two or three other categories and I was trying to, do like 75 or 50 in each of those car categories to try to get to 300. I probably got to like 220. Um, that's still a pretty good number. I don't think that's slacking, frankly. <laughs> it, okay. It's hard. It's hard to get there. Trust me. And, 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 and a year and a half later, I started to look at this list maybe three months ago, two months ago. And I had checked off some things that I didn't even know I had done, but I had wrote it down. Mm. And so me revisiting, continue to revisit that list challenges me because I'm just like, oh, I wrote that down two years ago and I'm almost there. And and write down stuff that even if you know there's 80% chance you won't accomplish it, write it down anyway, right? And if you can write that and you get to 200, 300 things that you want to accomplish in your lifetime and 20 years from now, if you can tick off 10% of those things, you've had a fulfilled life. Now, I don't know about you, when he first said 300 items on the list, I was a little overwhelmed, but I thought, you know, that's actually really inspiring. And not only is it inspiring overall to think, wow, I, I, I really forces me to think a whole lot bigger about uh, large and small things that I want to accomplish in life or that I even could accomplish, things I hadn't considered before. But a lot of that also starts to paint a really big picture about who I am not only what I do and who you are is directly at the core of something that if you've attended any training that I've done, especially over the last year or two, you've heard me talk about your personal brand. And a colleague of mine, Alan Kersner, who's a professor of business and marketing over at Temple University, he likes to talk, say that a brand is the promise of an experience and the experience of a promise delivered. What is your brand? What, ex what promise, what experience do you promise people and what experience do they get? What do you deliver when they do have the opportunity to talk to you, to work with you, to experience being with you? Think about that brand. And as you think about that, let's turn back to Jackie Linton, my guest who is the president of the Philadelphia chapter of SHRM or the Society for Human Resource Management. And she shares with us what she didn't use the term brand, but that's really what she's describing. And it has to do with your personal value proposition. Here's Jackie. So you've heard me talk a little bit about this whole idea of value, the mm -hmm. value that you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. 
I would challenge the listeners to take a minute and write down what they think their value proposition is. Mm. What is the value that they bring that will they can then use to influence other people? So first knowing what you what you have and then using it to to um, influence others. So the first step, write down your value proposition. What would it, can you give an example of what's, what does a value proposition, a personal value proposition sound like? Yeah. It's, it's what is it that you do really well, that you're really good at? So for me, I consider my value proposition as someone who is really great at solving problems. Mm -hmm. I also see my value proposition as someone who has a broad breadth of knowledge in areas A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. Um, And I, I'm also very committed to doing the work that I'm passionate about. So if I just said those three things to someone um, and, and, you know, what I might ask them is, so using those things, how would you see the best way for me to, you know, add value here, here, or here? Okay. So let's, let's scaffold out those three uh, elements that you just included. The first one was? Um, I, I'm very, I may not say them in the right order. I'm, I'm passionate and committed. Okay, so passion and, What's and passion committed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Passionate and committed okay. to, to doing things. I'm really good at solving problems. Problem solving. Okay. Yeah, that was the first Natural one, skill set. Right. right. And I have some, some um, knowledge and capability in areas A, B, and C. Like what are the technical things that I bring to the table? For me, it's around human resources. All right. Now that you have your big vision, your 300 item list of everything you want to accomplish in life and your brand vision for who you are, it's time to go from that strategic 30,000 foot view to a more tactical boots on the ground, day-to-day level approach. What steps are you going to take and how uh, in order to, to leverage that value proposition and start crossing items off that bucket list. What skills are you gonna to need to develop to do it? Trish Wallenbach, president of the Please Touch Museum, gives you the first steps to take. So I went at this from the, if I was gonna run a marathon or do a diet, what would I do? I'd okay. get a plan, okay? And you have to get started. And when you do tough things like that, you have to get some soft early rewards, like some big wins early on, so you keep going. Right. Um, and I think when you're trying to figure out how to have more influence, you, you're not even actually sure where the rewards are coming from or if it's happening. And you kind of put that to the end of the list, you know, as you're making your to do list for the week or for the day. So my challenge would be in the next 24 hours, determine two things that you could do in 30 days that would position you more strongly to be an influencer and then find your champion. Find one person that's going to check in with you to see how you're doing on that every day, every other day. And at the end of the 30 days, my guess is you'll have done it and you'll feel good about it. And you'll go, oh, I can actually do this. So let's think about the next goal. Now, you've officially made your plan. You have picked your top two goals that you want to achieve with a 30-day deadline. And that deadline is really important because for any of you out there who have done, who have made SMART goals, you can look that up on Google if you've never heard of it before, SMART goals. The T in SMART, of course, stands for time bound. So that's a great way to make sure that you're actually going to get moving on it and not just be thinking about it as we all have a tendency to do. But execution requires precision. And the first step is in certainly my world, is being able to articulate your own thoughts clearly and concisely. And that means not meandering in your thoughts, not thinking aloud and kind of trying to figure out what you actually mean while you're talking, hoping that as you hear the words coming out of your mouth, that eventually something's going to click. We don't we don't want to take people on this journey where we're basically building our plane mid flight in conversation. If you can't figure out what it is that you're trying to say, how on earth can you expect somebody else to figure it out? So Chris Kane, who is the president and CEO of Mercator 21 and of the Center for Global Enterprise, offers an exercise that that we can all use as a regular practice to master this skill. Somebody asks you a question. Um, Here's what I have learned to be probably the most effective aspect of communicating uh, and and to have an impact or to have influence. And it's to answer first and explain second. 
So over the next 24 hours, when somebody asks you a question, answer first and explain second. I, I'm sure that we all have had experiences. Either we do it or we have had it done to us where we ask somebody a question and you get a long explanation. But you don't. sometimes you don't even get an answer. You just get a long explanation. Or if you get a long explanation, by the time you get to the answer, you're so tired and so exhausted, you can't remember or can't focus on what the answer is. So I would really encourage you to make sure that you are not doing that, that you are answer, you're answering first and explaining second, if you feel there's a need to explain. And this is particularly important for people who have moved into management or decision-making responsibilities, having not had those responsibilities formally assigned to them in the past. Because when, you, when you're trying to g- kind of rise up and, uh, and in, you know, kind of grow your career, you're frequently trying to ex- impress somebody to say, look, here's my idea. I really think it's a good idea. And so there's this need to explain why your idea is a good idea. So part of rising up the ladder is actually being able to be communicate that you know what you're talking about and that you know what you're talking about fully. But once you get decision-making rights, you really need to stop worrying about whether or not you need to explain your decision and your actions. Mm. Now, it, it's, it's important to be able to do it, but you don't have to do it first. And frequently people don't make that transition from from being a non-manager or a non-leader or a non-decision maker to being a decision maker. Because when you're the boss, you can just make your decision and it will hold. You really don't have to explain it. You should, and you should be open to questions, but you don't have to. And I see all the time where people explain first and answer maybe second. Sometimes they never even answer. Great. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty, getting nice and tactical. But if you're somebody who tends to overthink things, sound familiar by chance, then often one of the biggest challenges is is, uh, bridging that gap, that three inch gap between your brain and your mouth, right? We, everything makes sense in our head, but then when it comes time to actually open our mouths and talk, we tend to trip over ourselves a little bit. And it's like, we think to ourselves, why is this so complicated? This just shouldn't be that hard. And yet it is. But sometimes the best way to develop a skill is to find a role model who is already great at it. And Luciana Bonifacio, the chief development officer for Save the Children, so shows how she leveraged these resources to help her become the leader that she is today. My first challenge is the 24-hour challenge, and then I'll tell you what comes after that, but the 24-hour challenge would be take a moment to jot down two, three people. They can be at work. They can be in your personal life that you think, but that you're close enough, okay? People you can observe Mm -hmm. that you think are great leaders. And then over the coming weeks and months, every time you're in a meeting where they are, observe them. What exactly, and jot it down, okay? What is it when they take a, an action, when they say something that is maybe different than the way others in similar positions act, what is it that you appreciate about them? And then I think that first moment of taking, um, taking stock of what it is they do, then you can start seeing what of those you like and you also feel like they would work for you, that you may want to do more of that. And um, and that may just start giving you some hints of, you know, because there are so many preconceptions sometimes on what makes a good leader. And sometimes it can be at all levels of leadership and it can show sometimes in unexpected ways. So it's just giving you awareness of what resonates with you. I hope one by one, these are starting to really get your juices flowing and inspire you with some creative ideas of things you just may not have put together for yourself and realize, but this isn't actually all that complicated. Uh, But it's also important to remember that influence isn't just about the what's in it for me factor. Sometimes it's about simply adding value for others. And that's the third category. And it doesn't have to be difficult or complicated. You can follow what's often referred to lovingly as the KISS 
principle, K-I-S-S. Have you heard of that? If you haven't, I, I want to thank my high school history teacher, Mrs. Forsman, for writing that on a number of my essays and teaching it to me quite directly. It is keep it simple. Technically, I believe the last S is stupid, but I prefer sweetheart, right? Keep it simple, sweetheart. Don't overcomplicate things. So in this case, the influence challenge or ways to improve ourselves and to give back can be as simple as making a point of showing gratitude. And Karen Fryer, the CFO of Benco Dental, lays it out plain and simple. Um, good question. So, you know, the holiday season just passed. It's It was time for family, time to connect with those that meant the most to you. We just celebrated a new year. And as I reflect on my journey and talk about mentorship, I would say my challenge is for all the listeners out there to go out and connect and say thank you and retain, return the favor to someone that's meant something to you in your to you in your career. Um, it could be a previous team leader, someone mentoring you today. It could be someone in your family or someone in the, commun in, in the community. And it goes back to keeping a line of open communication and appreciating those around you it goes a really long way in helping your career. And at the very least, you know, it could brighten someone's day because you never know what kind of day they're having. I love the simplicity of simply sharing gratitude, expressing gratitude with somebody. It's, it's amazing how fulfilling it is to see the look of appreciation on their face for something so small and how that really just gives back more and more. But then again, leaders also need to step out of, of our comfort zone sometimes and try something that's a little bit harder, that whole leading by example thing. Mark, uh, Mark Nikolich, the CEO of Brascom America, gives a play-by-play -play template on how to do this. He suggests a particular way to change course on, let's call it a slightly rocky relationship and figure out how to create it, how to turn it into a more effective, more positive working relationship that not only improves the day-to-day -day experience, but improves your overall organizational culture. Here's Mark. So my challenge for all of you is choose a peer that you work with that uh, the two of you working together could improve the productivity of the company markedly. Uh, but this peer has to have some tension with you. So you're not 100% comfortable with this peer. You have differences in agreements, you have different processes, you have a different way of going about things. You're introverted, they're extroverted, whatever it is. I would like to challenge you to wade into that, set up a meeting with them, explain some of the challenges that you have with, re with the relationship, explain what you think you can do to improve your behavior, to engage more with that peer team member, and ask them to open up to you. That's the final piece of it, right? And this can be a very simple conversation. Um, it can start out very easily, and I'll give you, I'll give you the opening. It, the opening is, is Laura, you and I have worked together for a while. We've never, you know, we, we, we haven't always seen eye to eye. And I think if you and I work together better, we can progress this company and our teams uh, far better. And so I'm here uh, with uh, an open mind to share with you the things I think I can do to work better with you, Laura, the things that I feel like I can do to help our relationship. Um, and I'd love to have that dialogue with you and see if the other team member opens up. I so, uh, and, and it, it takes some courage. These are, these are what I call zones of discomfort. This is walking into this uncomfortable space. But I think once you walk into that space and you come out the other side, uh, regardless of how it goes, you'll feel like you've made progress as a leader. Last but not least, sometimes the difference we need to make is for somebody we've never met before but who has already given so much to us without us even realizing it. Our active military and our veterans give so much behind the scenes. And it's so to everybody out there in the armed forces, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication and for your sacrifice. I think it's really important that the rest of us never wanna forget that we get to do what we do every day get to do what we love, what I love every day, freely and safely, because you do what you do every day. So to all the rest of us out there, how can we serve our veterans, our armed forces members in return? Ralph Galati, the J-Dog Foundation, shares exactly how.
Now, you referenced earlier about if you encounter a veteran in any capacity, whether you just sort of see them standing at a bus stop or you are working with them in the cubicle next to them, whatever it happens to be, what do you want people to do? Uh, take action. That's the that's the single biggest thing. Uh, thank them for their service. If you know they're in the military or if they're a veteran, and sometimes your neighbor could be still active, they could be in the guard or reserve. Um, and there's challenges not just for them, but for their family members. Um, I would ensure a simple question, which is, are you getting all your veterans benefits? I don't, you don't even have to know what they are. You just have to ask them if they're getting them. More than half of the people you talk to are going to say no. Uh, in which case you have my permission to smack them around a bit and challenge them. And, <laughs> metaphorically, and, metaphorically, metaphorically, metaphorically. Yeah, or, or physically. Uh, and, and insist that they do it. Uh, even if you have to uh, do more than encourage, even if you have to help them take some action. Uh, every county in Pennsylvania and in most counties across the country has an office of veteran services that is funded by the government. That's one place you can go. Uh, every community probably has a VFW or an AMVETS or an American Legion post. That's some place you can go. Uh, if you know somebody like me that's in your community that does veterans related work, that's where you can go. Uh, make that connection for them and encourage them or even force them to take some action. Uh, some of them might need um, counseling. Uh, they could all use medical coverage. Uh, they ought to know what their benefits are for education. Uh, there are spouse benefits. There are children's benefits. Uh, they have earned the right to take advantage of every benefit. So you owe it to them to be sure that they take that next step. Wow. Okay. We have just shared nine incredibly varied ways, uh, large and small, about yourself, about others, incredible ways to challenge yourself personally and professionally. The smorgasbord, as it were, of, of listener 24-hour influence challenges from the year. Uh, we will list all of these different episodes in the show notes, so you can go back and, and listen to them more carefully at your, at your convenience later on, should you decide to do so, and we hope you that you do. But I want to invite you to ask yourself how you can implement each of these challenges one by one. Some are simple with instant gratification, and of course, others will take a little bit more thought and effort. But do pick at least one, because a quick success inspires additional action. It's just the nature of the beast. It's how we're all wired. Now, if you can try to do all nine, great. Then go back and see what other challenges are out there that you may have missed along the way over the course of the last year and see what awesome challenges they have invited you to try. To everybody else, or to all of you, I should say, thank you, of course, for tuning in to Speaking to Influence throughout 2021. Be sure to continue to listen in 2022 for more incredible 24-hour influence challenges, along with stories, advice, do's and don'ts from leaders across the for-profit, non-profit, and other organizational, organization types, listen to their stories, listen to what they share, all different ways about how to find your leadership voice and maximize your confidence, presence, and influence. I'm Dr. Laura Sokola, and you're listening to Speaking to Influence, communication secrets of the C-suite. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Laura Sokola, and I want to sincerely thank you for listening to the Speaking to Influence podcast. If you love listening to these episodes as much as I love bringing them to you, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please go to iTunes right now to rate and review our podcast in order to help us expand our reach so even more people can master the three C's to command the room, connect with the audience, and close the deal. Thanks for listening to Speaking to Influence, Communication Secrets of the C-Suite, the show for leaders who want to speak with impact. The hosts, producers, owners, and media distributors of the show make no guarantees that the strategies and information discussed will result in profit or other success and may result in losses. The opinions and statements of the hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the owners, staff, managers, broadcasters, or sponsors of the show. No medical or psychological therapy or personal or professional wellness or relationship advice is offered in the show. You are advised to seek counsel on matters related to your health, family, relationships, job, or other business and legal matters from licensed advisors in those areas prior to making any changes in business or lifestyle. No information provided may be suitable in your situation. As always, take responsibility for the decisions and actions you take, including the reactions they may make in your work, family, health, and life.